Hey guys, in today's video we're going to go through another Intel Core i7-10700K 4.9GHz all-core overclock but with two key differences. The first, a different 10700K CPU and second, using an MSI Z490 Unify ITX motherboard. I've actually been able to sustain lower voltages with this CPU and if you have one of these CPUs you'll see what can be achieved here. Now, if you want to keep an eye on videos like these, please subscribe and turn on notifications. As of this recording, I'm using the latest BIOS from MSI. Here's the full specs. An Intel Core i7-10700K BIN CPU. A Corsair H80 single fan radiator. 32GB of DDR4-3600 RAM in a 2x16GB setup a HyperX 120GB Kingston SSD, an NVIDIA GTX 970, and a super cramped NZXT H210 Mini ITX case. On the MSI Z490i Unify ITX motherboard, I have Game Boost mode enabled for the CPU as well as XMP. All 10700K should be able to achieve a 4.9GHz all-core overclock as long as you have adequate cooling. So let's dive into the settings. Go to the overclock button, then set the OC Explorer mode to expert. Set CPU apply mode to all core, CPU ratio mode to fixed, CPU ratio offset when running AVX to zero, and set the ring ratio to 43. Scroll down to voltage settings, set CPU core slash GT voltage mode to override mode. Set the CPU voltage to 1.300, CPU SA voltage to 1.200, and CPU IO voltage to 1.150. Scroll down to other settings, then go to CPU features. You can use the settings I have on this screen. Now, once you've done that, go back and scroll all the way back up to advanced CPU configuration. For this setup, I have hyperthreading enabled, C states are disabled, I've set the long duration and short duration power limits to 225 watts. Intel Speed Shift and PCIe Spread Spectrum are both disabled. You can save the settings, exit, and will run Prime95 test. Note, if your CPU is struggling after reboot, you can enable C states, but don't go beyond C3. Make sure to download and install HWinfo64 as well as Prime95. I'll include the links in the video description. Run HWinfo64 and Prime95. Within Prime95, we'll disable AVX and use the small FFT test. We'll run it for 10 minutes. For the first test, we'll run it with hyperthreading disabled. Disabling hyperthreading can reduce latency. Some games like Fortnite can see a slight improvement in responsiveness. Most productivity apps such as Adobe Premiere use hyperthreading, but some game apps like COD Warzone have benefit with hyperthreading running. As we go through this test, you'll notice the starting CPU core temperatures hover around 30 degrees Celsius. If you find one of the cores fail, the temperature of that core will go back down to the base temperature. This would indicate you'll need to adjust the voltages. Generally, adjust the voltages in 0.005 volt increments. For CPU voltage, I don't recommend going above 1.4 volts. For SA and IO voltages, I wouldn't go above 1.3 volts. The CPU core temperatures range between 68 and 72 degrees Celsius. Next, we'll rerun with hyperthreading enabled for 10 minutes. We'll once again use the base temperatures as a metric, which will are hovering around 30 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, the CPU core temperatures ended at around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. This is a 12 to 13 degree difference. Remember, overclocking can help increase performance, but don't overclock too high. You could create additional latency if any CPU cores struggle to run. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Interested in more content like this? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. You can also support the channel by becoming a member. This goes into providing more content, getting more hardware to test and review. I also have a gaming channel called Definito Gaming, where I live stream and post game videos. 
an updated 5 GHz overclocking video will be coming out soon. Keep an eye out. Until then, have a good day and take care.